Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today I want to share a tutorial on how I like to pre-baste a quilt so that if I have to remove it from the machine and put it back on, which is pretty typical for me with my own quilts, I can have everything stable to complete the process and still have it end up square and hanging perfect at the end. So let's go over. The first thing I'm going to do as I start to baste this quilt is I'm going to loosen my top tension one full turn. And that's going to give me bad tension, which I want for my basting. It's going to make it a lot easier to pick out. The next thing I'm going to do is to change my stitches per inch to two to four. So I have here, um, whatever brand machine you do, that you, you have the same setup that you can set it for different stitches per inch. And I also on mine have set my Innova for a 400 start speed. That way it's not going to come to a complete stop because I'm going to be moving pretty fast and I don't want my machine to slow down too much as I'm doing this. What I'm going to do when I start basting is I'm going to start with a large meander and with the four stitches per inch it's going to keep everything square as I work my way across without having it be difficult to take out afterwards. So we're going to start this and I'm just going to do a nice meander, large size. Now, if I am going to be doing a lot of quilting in these areas, I'll do less. That way I don't have to take out so much. But what I like is that I can snip and clip four or five inches away from each other on the stitches if I want to take out a section to work in that section. Plus, you don't get that normal distortion that you get sometimes if you're just doing grid lines to base a quilt. Now I'm going over the drawing lines that we did to do our shapes in for this design. And I definitely want to keep a few of my meanders crossing over that line to keep it stable, especially with the size of the piece that we're working on today. A lot of times when you go to stabilize a block, when you're just doing your ditch work and then gonna come back and fill, you only need to put two or three stitches just to kind of stabilize the block so you don't get the batting shift. No matter what I'm quilting, I do like to go on the edge and do a little basting stitch right inside where the binding would go. It keeps it stable and it makes the binding so much easier to put on. Plus I can work in any fullness if I need to. Right up there. And now as I go into the chalk line that we made at the drawing table, I'm only going to put a few that cross over so that I don't have to take out so much because that's where we're actually going to start quilting. Again, just keep a nice large meander. Up and around. I'm not going to need so much in there because that's going to be the first section that I actually quilt with the geese. Also, by the way, something I wanted to share is that when I loaded this, I don't have the tension on my sandwich too tight. I have it nice and loose so that that way when I roll back, I can tighten the tension on the sandwich and the fullness will pull its way out. But if you already start with a really tight sandwich and you do your basting, then when you go back to quilts, it can be a little challenging not to get little tucks where you have to cross lines. Something you'd pick up in time after you've done it a few times. But now you don't have to do that. Okay. 
Now I'm on the bottom row and I'm going right down to the edge of the seam. And then I'm going to tack that bottom portion down so it's straight. The next step, I'm going to take out two or three pins. I'm going to fold that down, put a pin there, come down with my basting stitch. Now I'm not going to pull it tight, but I'm going to keep it stable and walk it so I can work in my fullness all the way across the bottom line. out my machine, take out the next two or three pins, pin it down, walk my way across the bottom, and again when I pull down I'm not pulling diagonal towards this way which is going to be your instinct. What you actually want to do is pull the fullness in and that's going to, you're going to make sure not to get any ruffling and it's going to be much straighter at the bottom. And I don't like to remove too many pins ahead of time. Three or four is about all I'll do. And as you notice when I do my pins, uh, when I actually load a quilt, I don't do head to tail. I keep them a little further apart. Saves time. Frankly, I've always found that the more pins you use, the more distortion you can get, more waviness. Now you have a fully basted piece. So there we have it. There is a wonderful way for you to pre-baste your quilt so that you can actually get those big projects done of your own that you've been wanting to do for a long time. The other thing to remember is this is a wonderful way for you to help out your friends who have sit-down machines because rather than using safety pins, this method just makes it a little easier to keep everything stable without having the click-click and the catch on the edge of the table that the safety pins can have. Have an incredible day out there and take care of each other. We'll see you down the road.